What's up, everyone? My name is Candace Smith, and this is Pasco Connect, and I'm here with Marlo Jones, Pasco Young Revolutionaries President. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right, Candace. Thank you for having me on tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I've been so busy uh, just in the in the streets, in the streets. Appreciate it. Time out to talk about these important matters. Yes, you've been busy running this revolution here in Newport, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been a quite an interesting one, that's for sure. Yes, it has. So we're going to get into it, but you know, I always like to get together and discuss some national topics as well. There's sure. a lot of craziness going on, like it's almost too much to keep up with sometimes. So, you know, on a real tip, I do like to call Marlo sometimes and I'll send him an article and just be like, did you see this? You know, <laughs> you to have somebody that you can talk politics with and just yeah. talk about things that's happening in the world. So I enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoy this conversation because we plan to get into some topics. So on a national level, of course, everyone is focused and, you know, dead centered on the elections coming up November 3rd. So the last day to register to vote, I believe is October 5th. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to put a link to pascovotes.org, I believe. Yeah. And they have all of the correct information. So if you don't have that much time, you still have an opportunity to go and register to vote. And I want to encourage everyone to do that. And um, so, you know, we down to two choices on the national level voting. Yeah, two choices. That is what our American political system has left us with. Donald Trump. Yeah. Joe Biden. Right, right. That is, that is democracy. That's what it has come to uh, right now. Uh, and it is a, various, a very serious election. I mean, there is a lot on the line here. Um, our democracy is at stake. You know, um, over the last four years, democracy has slowly uh, been eroded by this president, this current president and his administration. I mean, uh, just look at how Trump's presidency started out. I mean, the first day, the first press conference of this new presidency, he comes out not talking about what he's going to do for the American people, not talking about what he's going to deliver on. He's talking about crowd, crowd sizes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, so that, that alone should have kind of let us all know that this was going to be a joke right. before he, he was going to do everything in his power to dismantle uh, all those practices and um, – things that previous administrations put in place uh, to, you know, to prevent recessions, to prevent people from losing their homes, you know, to prevent the oligarchy from just taking over like they have been doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry about that. You might hear my children at some point yell in the background here and there. I am a father. My daughters like to watch Peppa Pig all the time. And right. <laughs> yeah, my son as well, because he's out there fussing with whatever he's on. So I understand. I think everybody, to a certain extent, is working from home and doing a lot of things from home. So I hear customer service reps, kids now. You know, yeah. <laughs> all you know, y'all in that uh, COVID nineteen. I've been quarantined in my little bunker uh, in an undisclosed location, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, just taking all the uh, right precautionary measures, uh, you know, because I have loved ones who are of, of, of that age where they could catch this virus. I have had, personally, I've had lost a friend about a month ago to COVID-19, and uh, it's very serious, and uh, it should not be taken lightly. It should not be taken as a joke. Listen to the scientists. Listen to the doctors. Do not listen to these politicians right. who don't know anything right. about uh, science or medicine. So, Absolutely. And, you know, you were mentioning different things dealing with Trump. And, you know, I thought about this year. I believe that he came into this presidency thinking he was going to coast. You know, he was going to be able to talk his way through all the political issues, all of the foreign issues, you know, get up there and just say whatever, rely on people around him to, you know, agree with him basically on a lot of things. And then the pandemic happened and it was the worst thing that could ever happen having this type of president that was just so unprepared and not yeah. even 
prepared kind of like put us in a position of being worse than unprepared because he had gotten rid of a lot of people that could have gave him counsel and yeah. have, you know instructed him during that time he had gotten rid of them and yeah. I think a lot of people forget as well that we were in an impeachment phase with him and so when this happened everything just got kind of like you know, I know I totally forgot about it because I was so worried about everything else. So yeah. I want to bring that back to the forefront. Now yeah. that we're back centered on the elections, I think it's time to remember a lot of the things that we expected to go a certain way for 2020. And yes, I understand that this, the virus and everything was not his fault. Yeah. However, well, it's not proven or anything like that. However, the way it was handled, yeah. the way it continues to be handled, which we'll get into as far as the funding, you know, stimulus, speaking of which, yeah. you know, so um, I just think I have to consider all of those things. And I don't over, you know, put so much on that that I haven't noticed some things about Biden that you know i haven't taken note of something so maybe we can get to him as well but as far as another four years with president trump how do you feel about that um mm, another four years with president trump um i don't know if we will have a democracy um and i say that because look what look at the damage he, four years is not a long time but look at the damage he's already been able to do in the four years he's been in office. I mean, totally tried to uh, destroy Obamacare. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the late Senator John McCain, you know, that would have been accomplished. Um, he's been able to have this Hitler-like mentality, this Hitler-like cultism, where people follow him, even though that they know he's lying. They know he knows nothing about diplomacy. He knows nothing about foreign policy. He knows nothing about many of the countries he degrades. He really knows nothing. He doesn't read his reports. He doesn't listen to uh, his intelligence officers. Uh, it's literally, uh, to Donald Trump, it's like the apprentice, for real. But, you know, we, we the American people, know, you know, you may play that, that fictitious character on TV, but our lives are not a TV a game. You know what I mean? People are dying. And because of his failed leadership, more people have died. And we know that for a fact now that the data is coming back. Uh, the Obama administration put in place a pandemic team to, to take care of things like this and mitigate these types of situations. Well, you know, when Donald comes in, you know, he just wants to get rid of anything that Obama had his name on, um, not even thinking about, well, hey, we actually should probably keep this in case something happens. Um, to our country as far as pandemics or viruses because we have information that the president knew he he knew very well the uh the deadly um the deadliness of COVID-19 and it's even been revealed uh with that uh little uh, ex excerpt that came out lately with him saying how he downplayed it so he certainly knew there's been lots of information that the world health organizations uh, we're alerting governments and alerting uh, world leaders many, 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 almost a half a year before COVID-19 actually started to take hold and, um, you know, pretty much make the whole world stop. Um, but the president failed. He failed us miserably. That's what we uh, elected him to do. That's what we hired him to do was to protect us, preserve our security, and, and all of those things. To me, he literally... Um, he literally just shredded his oath of office. I mean, you know, um, it's sad because it, it just if he would have even closed the country down sooner or if he would have actually taken the mask mandate serious. You know, you got all these people that go to his rallies. They're so loop, like loco in the brain that they don't even care about modern science that they've been told their whole life mm -hmm. is, it, is true and it's factual. You know, we can back it up. Trump says we're not going to wear a mask, so we're not going to wear a mask. It's a hoax. Right. The Russia thing, it's a hoax. Like, this is the same thing Adolf Hitler did. This is the same thing Joseph Goebbels did, the minister of propaganda in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. They brainwashed people that were very gullible to being brainwashed. 
and they keep repeating the same racist rhetoric to these people. And look what Hitler was able to accomplish when he became chancellor in the 1930s in Germany. People followed him blindly. And it's, it's the same thing with the Trumpers. Oh, well, we're not racist. We just love Trump. Well, Trump is a racist. So you go ahead and pick which side you want to stand on because you can't have the two, you know? So it's, uh, it, it's very dangerous. Another four years of him is very dangerous. And uh, I know that might upset some people that I know that are Trump supporters, but I quite frankly don't care. You know, it's our democracy that's on the line. Donald Trump does not care about Republican or Democrat. He only cares about his own self-interest. Absolutely, and his own self-interest has begun to affect us locally. I know a lot of times when we talk about the elections, we focus on the national elections. However, our local elections are very important as well. And I'm glad that I have Marlo on here, the uh, president of Pasco Young Revolutionaries, to talk about locally, you know, how who you elect locally affects you more, actually, you know, than the president of the United States. I mean, on a normal during normal times, you know, when it's not like this or whatever. Yes, we definitely need to vote nationally. Don't don't get it twisted. But yeah. you know what affects us the most is the people that we put into a positions of power in our own counties and in our own cities. And so yeah. I remember sitting in the Newport Ritchie uh, City Council budget meeting. And hearing the, the gentleman that was up talk about, you know, how money is being held up. And, you know, I thought about Ron DeSantis, Governor Ron DeSantis, who is over Florida. And he's just such a, a friendly person to Trump, you know. And I, I just can't help but wonder, you know, if the reason why people aren't able to you know, pay their rent like they need to and get the proper funding that they need to? Does it have something to do with, you know, just him on a national level? And even, you know, I thought about him saying how there's money that Florida has. Do you yeah. know what saying that? That there's money that Florida has and it's still, maybe I'll look for the clip and I will put it in this video but um, during that budget meeting, there was a gentleman that got up um, at the Newport River. Yeah. That was uh, Sean Foster. He's a state committee man for the Republican Party in Pasco County. Okay. All right. So he was up speaking about, you know, funding for the city. And he was mentioning, like, I'll be honest, this was my first time sitting in one of those types of meetings. It happens before the regular city council meeting. So they were only discussing money, you know, for the city. And then they got on the topic of the CARES Act and the money that's coming into the state and how it's being distributed to the cities to help people. And so what I learned is that there is a large portion of money being held by Governor Ron DeSantis, but he's continually asking, you know, state representatives to send him data. Did you catch that? What Debbie Manns, the city manager, had to turn in? Yeah. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis is a puppet. Uh, he's a poster boy. He does whatever daddy says. When I say daddy, I mean Donald Trump. If Donald Trump told him to jump off the Skyway Bridge, he would jump off the Skyway Bridge. Um, but yeah, millions upon millions, probably even half a billion dollars is being held up in the state of Florida. There are so many different accounts with money in it uh, that the state of Florida is being greedy. But I'll tell you who is getting paid. Those corporate lobbyists, they're getting their money. The big wigs, the 1%, those big business owners in the state of Florida, they're getting their checks on time. But the Florida unemployment system is broken. The right. governor doesn't give two dams about Floridians. People are suffering. He, send us data. Send us that. We're sending you all the data we have, sir. People are suffering. People still need help with their rent, with their mortgage, with their utilities. These, these social services, such as the Homeless Coalition, the Salvation Army, the CARES Act, all these places are being over flooded. The Alice Report keeps coming out. We're getting poorer and poorer in this particular part of Pasco County. 
the West Side is being hit the worst. I mean, probably close to 13, 14,000 people lost their jobs. Some of those jobs are never coming back. And we can't even get help from our state government. The unemployment system is a joke. You contact Gus Arrakis's office, nobody can help you. They just, they refer you to this person and this person refers you to that person. They can't get a hold of Amber Mariano's office. She's not providing any detailed information on what the state legislators are going to do about this mess because a lot of this can be fixed at the, uh, at the legislative level in Tallahassee, but they haven't called any special sessions. And it's like, they're not doing anything, but people wow. are starting. One person I know that's always doing something and a couple other people are like uh, Anna Escamani uh, out there in Orlando. I mean, the, uh, the young lady has been just exceptional. I mean, people want her to run for governor for crying out loud because she and her office and Carlos uh, Guillermo Smith and some other uh, Democratic uh, representatives in Tallahassee, they have been working like overtime. You know, flood, their offices have been flooded with calls with people calling all over, not even in their districts, just looking for help. I mean, you know, it's, it's sad. It's, it's truly sad. And the fact that Florida was making millions upon millions of dollars on interest when this money was sitting in these bank accounts, but yet when uh, that new executive order that got approved of that Florida applied for that would give people on unemployment an extra $300, well, it should have been an extra $400. The Trump administration said, we'll give 300 if the states agreed to give an extra 100. Well, Ron DeSantis said, we'll take the 300, but we're not, we're not gonna pay the extra, extra 100. So that, for, that, that way, people will not get the extra two or three weeks of uh, that payment that they, the state of Florida would qualify for under FEMA. Oh. So instead of Ron DeSantis saying, hey, people are really struggling, let me go ahead and give them that extra dollar with the 300 since the, the United States Congress is still sitting on their ass doing nothing uh, with, the, uh, with the coronavirus relief bill or whatever, whatever the hell Mitch McConnell has going on in Washington. So the fact that he couldn't even do that shows you that he does not care about us as Floridians, as even people, you know? Yeah. Truly I mean, sad. Yeah, it is sad. And I feel like, you know, the fact that I heard them say, you know, well, why would they on a national level looking at the states? And let's say that the majority of the states are holding big chunks of money. Mm -hmm. money that we could be using towards helping people why would they send additional funds on a local level if you know like governor ron DeSantis is holding money for florida there could be other states doing the same thing as well yeah they they are doing the same thing i tell you what i would like to see some type of external investigation uh be launched into what what the hell is going on I mean, there's chaos. I mean, they're firing people at the at the DEO. The governor doesn't know what's going on. He looks clueless when you see him in interviews. Um, and it's like there's no accountability. And people are people are dying in the streets. People are homeless. People are starving. You know, like, this is not a joke. People's lives are being destroyed. And, and some people might, might not ever be able to bounce back. You know, my generation of kids were all, you know, ready to work and they're coming out of high school, they're going to college, going to college, but you can't get a job. Right. You know, you got a $40,000, $50,000 degree, but you can't, even get, you can't even get a job to pay off the student loan debt that you're in because you wanted to better your education. Because that's what you're supposed to do in the American dream, right? right. Well, these politicians, this president, they have robbed us of the American dream. And if you are a minority, it's, it's 20 times as hard. A study just came out the other day, which everybody probably has seen that all, it's sickening that a black man is three to five times more likely to be killed during a police encounter than hit a white man. Three to five times more likely. Last year in America, there are over 260 plus killings of African American by the hands of the police. I mean, we are living in some scary times. You know, we have an attorney general who's on TV uh, comparing uh, what he sees going on to slavery, like making, like literally mocking our ancestors who fought and died and bled for this country. Their blood, sweat, and tears are soaked in America's soil. And for him to get up there talking about, oh, well, that's, you know, that's like compared to slavery. Like, oh, no, Mr. Barr, you are a white man. I dare you. 
I dare you speak on slavery as if your ancestors had to endure anything what my ancestors had to go through. And then he gets on uh, the, the, you know, boasting, well, I'm the attorney general and I should be able to tell people to do what I want. And I'm not trying to be pompous. Well, you are trying to be pompous. When you have white people like um, Donald Trump's cabinet who has been convicted, they have lied to judges, they have lied to the FBI. But these white men are all getting out of jail early. They're getting their records expunged. Donald's pulling get out of jail free cards. If they were black, they would be in jail until they died. What you see going on in this justice system with this justice department that Bill Barr is at the head of is, is pretty much criminal. You have, a, you have a justice department that's supposed to keep us safe and you know, investigate the criminal, but the, the, the attorney general is a criminal himself. He's investigating the president's rivals, using it to his advantage. He's not looking at Russia, which we know is still trying to infiltrate the elections, still making thousands of fake Facebooks and Instagrams and all this stuff to influence the election. And they know it. They know it. And they don't care. I'm sorry. My thing is that they just put a ban on TikTok as of today. And so basically that ban means that as of right now, of course, it's subject to change. But as of right now, there won't be any new updates that you can do um, for TikTok. So when there are new updates and new, you know, how they put a new update out and there's some new filter or effect that you can use or something like that. Wow. So we to be able to do that. And it's funny how he wanted to run. You know what I mean? Like Trump has been talking about TikTok not mm -hmm. being a way for, you know, the Chinese to infiltrate, right? Isn't it the Chinese? Do you know who, tic who owns TikTok? I believe so, but he's been wanting to stop the Chinese from infiltrating the United States, and he recognizes that the um, that TikTok is access to do that. And so, what I find funny is that Facebook has been proven over and over again. They've been talking about it for years. How you know Russia has infiltrated Facebook and used it for elections. And it's so funny because I was watching a, a Netflix documentary last night. I think it's called Social Dilemma or something like that. And it was really interesting. I think Marlo, um, he probably will call back in because I think we lost him. But anyway, it was real interesting, you know, how they were, it, there were a lot of people that have worked in high positions if you don't know, I don't want to give it all away, but it's a documentary and it's a lot of people that has worked in high positions within social media companies like Twitter. Um, there were some people that worked for um, Google. I don't want to lie. I definitely remember those two, but there were others. And so um, they were just talking about the elections and how social media was used to sway an election and you know I did notice that they kind of avoided blaming specific countries they sort of put the blame on this mysterious way social media sways us you know and not kind of putting the blame on the people behind it with those motives and that they're the ones who are you know driving the force to do certain things and to seek out certain information so that was a very interesting documentary and i think you know i probably watched it right on time because the very next day which was today i watched it last night i read the article on you know the TikTok ban and i just thought that was very interesting i knew that he was proposing to do that, but to have it actually done, I haven't even broken that down to my son yet. A lot of people may not even notice it because how do you know something that you don't know? So a lot of people will just know that TikTok stays the same. There will be no updates in the U.S., you know, in other places there will be. There was another software that was less recognizable to me that was attached to that ban. But there could be other updates later, meaning that they could uh, 
you know, eventually start taking away certain services that TikTok has that, you know, they feel goes against the U.S. policies that are being put in place. And, you know, it could eventually get to the point where no one will probably want to be on there because they will strip it down or say that, oh, this particular, you know, aspect of TikTok or this particular effect on TikTok goes against the standards. So if you want um, to have, continue to allow people to have use here in America, you have to take that away. And so, of course, they want the money because TikTok is a money-making machine. And honestly, that's one aspect that I would love to talk about because so many people are beginning to use TikTok and um, monetize it and they make a lot of money and, you know, they use it to get noticed by brands. Um, they're just doing a lot with it. So for that to be taken away, it's now going to cause a serious, serious damage, um, some serious, serious damage to some people's pockets. So I see that Marlo was not able to rejoin. And that's fine because I think we only had one other thing to discuss and maybe we'll save that to later. Oh, Wow, right on time. I hear the little doorbell to Zoom letting me know that he's back on. So we'll give him a few seconds to come back in. And then maybe we can talk about this last topic that we need to discuss. Marlo, are you there? Hello? Okay, I'll give him a few seconds. In the meantime, between time, please go to Facebook and find Pasco Young Revolutionaries and go and like that page. Also go to Facebook and search for Pasco Connect. There's a Facebook uh, page and a group like that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and stay tuned for more videos and articles. So Marlo, you came back right on time. I said, oh, we lost Marlo. <laughs> and then it was like, ding dong. <laughs> so, Anyway, I think the last topic that we was going to talk about was the Pasco Sheriff's Office Tampa Bay Times investigation. And I know you were mentioning how earlier, you know, you were saying there's no accountability to a lot of things. And I do feel like the media and the news does serve that purpose. Oh, we lost him again. I do feel like the media and the news serves that purpose sometimes as being uh, an organization that can bring up investigations because that's what the news and media does. They investigate certain instances and certain things that are happening within the community. And so what has happened here for some unknown reason, but the Tampa Bay Times cannot seem to, for whatever reason, take their foot up off of Pasco Sheriff's Office. And so they've started their own investigations into, into them and their practices. And they put out this extended article on um, basically talking about how uh, Sheriff Nako started this uh, investigation system that basically predicts who will be you know, um, the next person to commit a crime or how likely it is that they will commit a crime. Um, and he's basically using information off of people's. For instance, if you're a teenager and you get in trouble with the law, that data is collected. And once data is collected, it's, you know, um, I don't know, configured. <laughs> <laughs> configured in some type of way to make these predictions. And so what they would do is they would start, the police would start maybe riding by your house or doing these check-ins with you coming to knock on your door, wanting to know where you're at, what you're doing, where you're living, are you working? And a lot of times those situations led to more arrests. That would even that would happen with um, mental health patients, where 
you know, they would have a run in with the law due to their mental health. And so now they're in this tracking system with the sheriff's office. And so now the sheriff, because they're in this system, they can go out and do a checkup on you. <laughs> so, my mm -hmm. yes, I was just getting back into that, um, talking about the Tampa Bay Times investigation into the Pasco Sheriff's Office. And, you know, it had came out how they're using this system to pr basically predict you know, who's going to commit the next crime and yeah. that justifies them being able to go and now knock on those people's door and yeah. do checkups on them, go to their jobs, go to their family homes. I mean, if you look up the article, there are so many different families that give examples of how, you know, basically the Pasco Sheriff's Office stopped people once they served their time and they're back on the street and yeah. so now they're being stopped. So Yeah, and it's that's sad. Uh, what that's called, Candace, is, uh, you know, I've been following this story for, for quite some time because I felt, honestly, that I've been a personal victim of this system. Um, it's called intelligence-led policing, mm -hmm. and it's a computerized, a computerized system that's very sophisticated. They know who to target. They know who they want to target. You know, they try to say, oh, the system isn't racist. It's not targeting a specific, specific gender or a specific race. Well, we call BS on that because most of the people that are being picked up by this is people of color, mm -hmm. you know, people who have had maybe prior run-ins with the law people that might be trying to get their life on the correct path. So pretty much what it is, it's the system trying to keep you in the system. Right. And, and it's sad because, you know, uh, these people can never make it out. You know, once you're hit with all these court costs and fines and all this stuff, it's a perpetual system to keep you in the darkness or in what we like to call the sunken place. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's very alarming that the sheriff's office is doing this. I am not surprised. You know, like I said, I have been a victim of this. I've lived in Pasco County my whole life. And I know a lot of African-Americans have been a victim of this because we are the minorities here. So you best believe they have a spreadsheet where they're just, you know, documenting and keeping track of all the people that they might deem a problem or, you know, whatever, however they're using the system to, uh, you know, uh, root us out, which is sad because that's, that's like, that, that's, that's criminal in itself. Um, you know, um, it's, can we get a system like that for dirty politicians and cops and things like that? You know, to maybe weed them out. Can we, right. you know, maybe develop something for that? So uh, it, it's, it's disturbing. It's very disturbing, Candace, very disturbing. And um, right. I've um, been in recent discussions, you know, with the city manager of Newport Ritchie and just talking to a lot of those folks and, um, I'm pretty sure Newport Ritchie Police Department is doing the same exact thing because they work hand in hand with the Pasco Sheriff's Office as a lot of these, uh, you know, there's five different policing agencies in the uh, county. So they all work hand in hand. They all communicate back and forth. They all go help each other when they're having protests and, and these types of things like that. Um, I just want to put something out there for the record. We don't hate cops. I don't hate cops. We don't like bad cops. We dislike the cops that only become cops to make people like me's life miserable. We don't like the good cops who don't call out the bad cops. If you see somebody doing wrong in your department, call it out. We should not have officer, officers that patrol our streets that are diversified. We should not have officers who we hold to the highest of integrity in our community. We should not have officers that pose pictures behind Confederate flags. You know, they're on the boat. You know, posing behind a Confederate flag. We shouldn't have that. We that that should be addressed, and we shouldn't have officers that give out sensitive information on peaceful where peaceful protesters are going to be. You know, um, there's a lot of bad apples. Uh, you know, not every cop bad. We understand that, but we have to do our best to call it how we see it. Well, speaking of you know what we shouldn't have as far as the the law enforcement agencies. I know that during the last city council meeting, you know, you did get up to speak about those things and yeah, got up to speak during box. Right. In a very dramatic way, you know, you had 
somebody there that was able to hold the poster up and you had screenshots blown up of, you know, um, law enforcement agents here in Pasco County posing with the Confederate flag and doing exactly what you said, you know, basically coming out armed to the T in the yeah. future and saying, this is how you're going to come out to uh, a Black Lives Matter protest. Yeah. Right. Very sad. And uh, we had that, you know, uh, I went to city council to expose this, to talk about it because city council, or at least the mayor, you know, and I'm sure some of the councilmen, city council members feel this way as well. But the mayor has just been really painting Black Lives Matter in a bad light. And he tries to say, you know, well, ABC Action News only got a little bit of this excerpt or they only got a little clip. They didn't play it all. Well, trust me, you don't want them to play the whole interview. You really don't. And the things the mayor said is very disheartening. You know, he they make it seem like, oh, we're just out here yelling and the message is getting lost and we're just yelling for no reason and we're just marching up and down the streets for no reason. No, we're not. Things are happening. As you know, body cams are now coming in out to play. You know how long that's been on the back burner? Do you think that ever would have happened if Black Lives Matter Pasco and the Pasco Young Revolutionaries and everybody else that teamed up with us did it? make that a number one item on our agenda. How do you have over 50 cops on your payroll, but only seven body cameras in your department? And how come when every time we ask you, it's, oh, they're on back order, or, oh, we, uh, we're waiting on them to come, or, or we, we're waiting on the city to pass the budget. You know, it's like they're, they're walking that little dance with us, but we, we're not here for games. We're not here for jokes. We want to see accountability and transparency across the board. And when those body cams come in, you bet your butt, we wanna, we wanna sit down with the chief and we wanna um, you know, go over what policies are going to be enacted um, when these body cams are being worn by the officer, you know, like making sure they're not turned off at will. They should be on the whole time during an officer shift. You know, that's just my personal opinion. I don't know how that's gonna go, but you know, hopefully we can uh, get some help from our, our friends at the Eight Can't Wait campaign, uh, D-Ray McKesson, and, you know, talk about maybe how we can um, better work with, you know, law enforcement in our community, because we're trying. We really are trying. I know a lot of people try to make it seem like, oh, you know, oh, Black Lives Matter this, Black Lives Matter that, Pasadena Revolutionaries this, Pasadena Revolutionaries that. But we really are trying to make good change. You know, we're, we're coming to the table. We're sitting down with these local leaders, and we're trying to come to sensible solutions. Now, we might not always see eye to eye or agree with each other, but we all agree that body cams are an immediate need and should have been implemented years ago. It should not have taken all this that is going on for the police department or the city to vote on body cams. Like that should have, when the Pasco County Sheriff's Office became fully equipped with body cameras for their agency, all the other five agencies should have too. Now, I don't care if they had to go to the federal government to get that money or whatever they had to do. If I sit at these city council meetings and I hear about all these budgets and expenditures and the money they're spending and this and that, why have body cams never been on the, the, the front of the uh, agenda? Why has it always been pushed back? You know, I don't, I don't want to hear the excuses. We just want action. We just want you to do what you say. Be right. true to what you said on paper, as, uh, you know, Martin Luther King would say. Okay. Well, you know, I think that we'll definitely keep up with that as well as other issues and things that we definitely want to pay attention to, policies that are putting into place. Yeah. I know I'm definitely interested in knowing everything I can know. So although we got escorted out of the last city council meeting by police. <laughs> so, tra so tragic. I was actually hoping, you know what's so sad, Candace, is I was hoping to stay because they end up having a discussion about the body cams. And it's funny, the mayor's like, well, I see no one here for public comment, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Like, oh, uh, yeah, people were here for public comment, but you kicked them out because you knew we were going to have something to say about it. Yeah. Um, and he you know, said something, you know, sit them down or something like that. He's like, escort them off the premise. I was like, wow, really? That's yeah. my <laughs> yeah, that, well, that goes to show you uh, it's deeper than just, you know, me going over three minutes, you know. Um, I felt like 
that was very important information that I think city council should have given me maybe an extra minute or so to talk about. I understand they didn't like the fact that it wasn't looking good for the police department or their city, um, but that that stuff the public should be aware about. We should know that we have an officer that rides around in her squad car that poses behind a Confederate flag. I, as a black man, should, should know that. Mm-hmm. And if I have an encounter with this officer, I need to know, you know, who I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? Because this, this isn't right. A flag that's been banned by the military, been banned by, you know, pretty much by the world. The only people that support it are, are pretty much deplorables. People who uh, believe that, oh, it's our heritage. Your heritage kept my people in chains. So the hell with your heritage. You know, it belongs in a museum. It doesn't, no officer that's getting paid by my dollar, my public money that I pay in taxes, because I, I spent a lot of money in Newport Richie. You know, I've, I've lived in Newport Richie before. I've lived in the city limits. I've spent a lot of time in Newport Richie. I have friends that own, own businesses downtown, you know, so I am all about economic uh, opportunities. But, you know, let's be fair. You know, uh, what the mayor did to uh, have me escorted out was pretty wrong, um, but it shows this is what they do to a lot of black people in movements. They try to make us seem like we're crazy, tyrannical, and we're just yelling, and they don't understand the message. They understood the message. Right. They didn't want to continue going on about that officer who was posing behind a Confederate flag. Um, but, you know, all that's going to be also coming out very soon in an article. Uh, just about that whole ordeal, just how they treated me, you know, it was just crazy because uh, we have footage of many other previous city council meetings where other people that were not African-American went over their three minutes. Do you think they got the gavel? Right. Do you think they got escorted off the premises? No, I mean, we can go back a couple of meetings because, you know, we've been attending city council meetings for months now. So um, they never got the gavel. As a matter of fact, in some of their Uh oh, I think it's freezing up a little bit, but I think I know what he was going to say was that there were previous times we attended the meeting and it did not freeze up, you know, like that. So yeah, it says my internet connection is unstable. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you now. It does say my internet connection is unstable for some reason. So I apologize if it's me, but um, I feel like we answered and talked about a lot of things. I am going to play the full video of what happened at the city council meeting, um, what I have, but you can also always go to the Newport Ritchie, city of Newport Ritchie website. And under the city council, there is a section called live broadcast. And when you click on that, Um, you can see all of the meetings in the past and I did see where they uploaded that meeting and I'm going to actually go and check it out the full meeting myself to take notes on what I missed or whatever and I'll be back there again in a week and a half for the next one. Yes, they're going to be talking about the fiscal budget coming up soon. Um, You know, they try to, you know, I believe their hopes is that many people like us don't show up to these meetings. But that's why, you know, you know me, Candace. I've been going to these meetings before many of these protests even started. But I would like to say to the audience that is listening or that will be listening that, uh, um, you know, uh, let's have some high hopes for this second stimulus that will be hopefully coming out uh, before the senators go on vacation. One thing that really irks my nerves and really just grinds my gears is the fact that those senators had a 30-day paid vacation, 30-day paid vacation. They all went back to their districts. They all went back to their little bungalows. And you know what? And you know what? The American people were left with nothing. Expired unemployment uh, insurance, Uh, people starving, eviction mandatoriums uh, being uh, lifted, people being kicked out of their homes. I mean, every day you see it, it's depressing, it's stressful. Uh, I mean, social services are being uh, stressed to capacity. The amount of depression and things that people are dealing with mentally, going like just dealing with all this, it, it, it's it's truly sad. 
And um, I've just been talking to some colleagues today in Tallahassee. I've been uh, doing some research as well. I know the House of uh, Representatives have passed another bill where they have met the Republicans in the middle, about $1.5 trillion. Uh, uh, it would be uh, $1,200 going out to everybody, $500 a dependent. Um, and this would, as Steve Mnuchin say, be in the hands of the American people very quickly. The Secretary of the Treasury even made a startling comment saying that this is needed. Uh, without this, the economy will suffer. He told the Amer American people and the Congress that, you know, stop worrying about the, uh, the deficit because right now the economic, uh, the economic stability of our country is at stake. You know, Mer we need to put money in the hands of the American people. Mm -hmm. We need to put money in the hands of these business owners that are struggling, that have to close down, that have to reopen. We have to put money in the school system. I know teachers that don't even have supplies for their kids. Teachers have to go out and buy their own cleaning supplies. I mean, how sad is that? I mean, this is what the world is coming to. How can the greatest nation on earth not even take care of the children in its schools? How can the greatest nation on earth be allowing the planet to, to slowly die? I mean, did you see that recent study that just came out about just the vegetation of the earth and just the, the population of the animals just decreasing like never seen before? I mean, we are truly like just killing our planet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's sad. We're fighting so many different wars here, you know, economic, uh, you know, humanitarian, you know, for the planet. So I just want everybody to stay focused, keep praying, Stay, stay, stay prayed up because we're living in some truly dark times. And I pray that the stimulus package does pass. Uh, it is going to be up to the Senate now to go ahead and pass it. But what, one thing I think is good about this bill is that it triggers another stimulus payment in March if needed. So we won't have to go back to the table like what's going on now is you have the Republicans who agree. You have the Democrats who agree. They all agree on the number for the stimulus. They all agree that we all want it. But you got the infighting going on between the two parties. I say it's time for Pelosi to come together, and it's time for Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, McCarthy, Mnuchin, all of it. It's time to come together. Don't leave the room until a bill is signed. I believe they all should be locked inside of the White House. They should be locked inside the Congress until a deal is signed. That's what J.P. Morgan used to do. Everybody used to say how he was such a good deal maker and how he was a financial uh, powerhouse. When he came to making deals, it said that he would take people on his yacht. And if the two men that want to sell their company couldn't agree, he would leave them on the boat until they came to an agreement. Mm -hmm. I think that's what time it is for, for these United States congressmen because they, these people are millionaires. They don't know what it's like to suffer. They don't know what it's like when your child doesn't have formula. They don't know what it's like when you don't have baby water. They don't know what it's like when Duke Energy is going to say, hey, we're cutting off your bills and we really don't care that it's, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, so I urge you all to keep calling your senators. Call Marco Rubio. Call Charlie Chris. Call um, Amber Mariano, uh, your state legislators. You know, call Rick Scott. Call the governor. Urge them to do something. Write to them. You know, because it is the American people's money that they play with when they want to go to war, when they want to go sell billions of weapons to Saudi Arabia and all these other countries. When it comes time to taking care of America, we're asking them to do their jobs that they were elected to do. And I'm, call, and I'm, and I'm talking to Republicans and I'm talking to Democrats because I, I'm quite frankly upset with both sides, you know, in the way that they've been handling the situation. So we're going we're gonna to remain optimistic about this one. And uh, if I have any more updates on that stimulus package, I will let you know so you can reach, let the audience know. Definitely, yes. You know, I'm going to always be checking in because I know to call you up, let me tell you something, Marlo be on top of it. He knows what's going on with the politics, so yeah. I'm not always versed on it, but I'll definitely, you know, say, hey, Marlo, I saw this, what's going on? And he can explain it further. So that's uh, Marlo Jones, the president of Pasco Young Revolutionaries go over there to Facebook and like that page because he's always giving out some good information as well as some good commentary and always having some thought provoking conversations that's very educational. So definitely check, check him out. Um, was there any other topics that you felt like needing to be discussed? 
Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, you know, I just want to, I just want to thank everybody for doing what they're doing out there. That's been following me, following the movement. Uh, you know, I'm still going through what I'm going through. Um, you can always like or donate to uh, my GoFundMe for my legal defense fund, um, which will be up on the Pasco Revolutionaries Facebook page, or you can reach out to me directly. Um, you know, still just fighting the good fight in the city and trying to do the best we can to make change. And uh, we're starting to see some good changes coming with body cams and some accountability measures. I know uh, some friends and colleagues have been working with various police departments on their policies, examining them closely, uh, you know, and making uh, very, very good suggestions on changes and things like that to keep police safe, but not, but more importantly, to keep us safe. Yeah. Because we should not have 250 plus black people dying a year by by police officers. You know, police officers should protect us, not be the ju the judge, the jury, and the executioner. You know, as they are many times, as we've seen with Jacob Blake, as we've seen with Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey. I mean, I can go back. Do we really got to go back to Emmett Till? I mean, you know, this has been going on for too long, and we tired. <laughs> we tired. Exactly. Exactly. So definitely, you guys, if you are not registered, go register to vote. Um, you still have time in, in Pasco County to research your district. I would definitely advise you to go to PascoVotes.org. And um, they have a lot of information on the candidates. And then research them. Just take some time. We have two interviews on Pasco Connect right now with district number five candidates for county commissioners. Hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit more interviews. But in all honesty, when I look through the list, there are not a lot of people that even ran against someone else. Did you notice that? A lot of people are running unopposed. You know, people are not running in these elections. My, my goal and the young revolutionary goal is we want to change that. You know, we want to start putting some minorities on those tickets. And I'd like to see African Americans and minorities on the school board. I would like to see African Americans and minorities at the Newport Ritchie City Council. I don't think that all of our local governments should be made up of uh, white males. You know, it should it should be a balance of white and black, male and female. It definitely shouldn't. You know, we're we're not living in the days of colonialism anymore. The age of empire is over. So, you know, um, we have to wake up the people. We have to wake them up consciously. That's why it's very important to vote know the power of voting and you know 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 how the your vote locally can change and collectively yeah. when we can you know collectively we are very dangerous collectively i totally agree you're absolutely right so definitely go get registered to vote and um if you're able to participate in early voting please go and do so um i know that we're gonna get ready to do a few things teaming up with Miss Luana from Orlando and um, possibly Black Lives Matter uh, Pasco to do some things um, as far as uh, a registration day of voting. And so stay tuned for that. And then as well as some civics classes. <laughs> yeah. I know you all remember those classes or maybe you don't because I heard that some people never even had the opportunity to take them, but we're going to bring them back and we're going to take you back to school, back to class, and we're going to start having some classes to get you informed. So maybe next year or in the next four years when the elections come back around, you are definitely ready to participate and use your voice and use your power. Because like um, Mr. Jones said, you can be effective. It does help. It does work as long as you participate. Yep, yep. You have to be a participant, a participant. And you have to also encourage others. You know, um, I'll leave you with this quote. You may not care about politics, but politics cares about you. Mm -hmm. You know, all those people, oh, I don't want to vote. It means nothing. They does not care. Well, we know, we know that they can do sneaky things and steal elections on the national level. We've seen it with Al Gore, and we've seen it recently with Hillary Clinton and and uh, Donald Trump. You know, a lot of people don't know how to tell the difference between a popular vote and an electoral vote. We'll have that discussion another day, but the most important thing is to vote. At the end of the day, you vote for who you vote for. We're 
we're not sitting here telling you who to vote for. But as an African American, knowing that my ancestors did not always have this right, and some of them, a lot of them died, so I could have this right, I want to take it seriously. And I want to always instill in my children to take it seriously, you know, because we as black people, we got to understand the power of our vote. Not only the power of our vote, but the power of our dollar, the power of our economics. Do you know how much black African-American people contribute to the overall GDP of this country, the overall economics? Do you know how much money we spend on entertainment, on clothes, on social things? Absolutely staggering amounts of money. But hopefully one day we'll also have a discussion on financial literacy, which is something I wish they would also did more in high school, you know, versus trying to shove uh, Paul Revere down my throat and all the uh, glorious of the American Revolution. It would have been nice to learn a little bit more about your FICO score and, <laughs> you know, right, but things, I mean, we, things that benefit you. We can offer those things ourselves to our community, so maybe yeah. we'll get something. Maybe we will. Yeah, and economics, you know, black economics, you know, I feel like that's definitely important for us to start to see ourselves differently. If we see the amount of power that we have, then we will value the money, even if it's only a little bit. We will value it and put it in good places. We will put it in our brothers and our sisters and the people yeah. that surround us so that that money can stay in our communities. That's how other communities get successful. That's how the Asian communities, you know, become strong voices. And when they don't speak often, but when they come and speak, everybody stops and listens because they're a driving force. And there are other African communities that are like that as well. There are Jamaican communities like that. You know, there's all of these little sub communities that understand the power of when they work together and hiring each other and working with each other and taking care and protecting each other, supporting and, you know, just wanting the best for each other is something with African Americans for whatever reason, we want to hurt each other. And then it just hurts all of us. We don't see that if I hurt you, I'm hurting myself. If I spend my dollar with you, that's more money for me. We have to go through what we call, Candace, a re-education period. You have to understand for so long our people have been oppressed. We have been taught to hate each other. We, like Malcolm X said, you know, we are taught to hate the color of our skin, the shape of our nose, the shape of our lips. You know what? Most people nowadays, uh, they glorify. They go after, they want the big nose, they want the dark skin, you know, they want the, the everything that you see we have, um, you know, so we just have to, you know, we have, we have, our, our people have to have a re-education, we just got to constantly keep reminding black people how beautiful they are and how, how much their self-worth is, you know, and, and how collectively as a people are strong, resilient, true, true, true revolutionary fighters. Buffalo soldiers. Absolutely. I totally agree. So we're going to, if you all out there have some ideas and different things that you feel like, hey, we should do this or we should start that, speak up. Say something. Let's come together. Let's collaborate. I'm definitely down. We can do the virtual thing because we know COVID is real in the Pasco streets. So we want to be careful with that. But there are always ways to work around it. And maybe we can all come out of this better and stronger and, you know, just more enlightened about a lot of different things. So I want to thank you once again, Mr. Jones, for joining today. Um, thank you. I'm just always appreciative of you bringing the knowledge. <laughs> well, you know, you know me, I, I have a thirst for knowledge. So uh, my favorite poet said, when you get, give, and when you learn, teach. And that's the late, great Dr. Maya Angelou. So, you know, I love reading. And I love learning about new things and cultures and different ways of life. So if I can share that with my fellow human beings on my journey of life, then that's all right. All right. Well, until next time, you guys. Peace. Peace.